under new business, uh, item number one, Mr. Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, item number one is an ordinance to authorize the execution of an amendment to the jurisdictional boundary line, agreeing with the Village of Sugar Grove. The Village of North Aurora has boundary line agreements with its neighboring municipalities from um, Aurora to the south and to the east, uh, the to the north, and Sugar Grove to the west. They're basically done mostly in communities that are not built up on the periphery. In this case, we do have unfiltered lands uh, to our west as the Sugar Grove. What we're looking to do is basically just redo the existing boundary line. The latest one was approved in 2015 with a 20 year term. What we're looking to do is sort of align this boundary line agreement with our agreements with Batavia and Aurora, which are going to be upcoming. I'm um, also to provide clarity to some language within the actual agreement itself and establish a new 20 year term to expire in 2039. On the screen here, you will see that the red area consists of the existing boundary line. It's not entirely accurate regarding the red line. It actually stops at our portion with this with the mouse is right here. Because that's where our boundary with Aurora commences. So what we're looking to do is this is the existing line here from Sugar Grove, which delineates our east and west boundaries. We're actually looking to establish a an actual jurisdiction line all the way from 88 to Main Street Batavia. And what it allows us to do is is Basically, obviously, anything that is on the west side of that boundary line agreement were to develop, it would go into the village of Sugar Grove. Anything to the east would go to the village of North Aurora. Now, it's important to note here that this point here is where it currently terminates. Now, this is because our boundary line agreement with Batavia actually starts here. So, anything north of this area would be with the boundary line with Batavia, and um, it, it kind of gets a little here we go north because the Tavia and St. Sure Grove also have boundary line agreement. So what this does, it extends the boundary line to Main Street. It allows a boundary line delineation so we can go back to with the Tavia and actually negotiate more land in the village to the northwest quadrant here. So and, and Sure Grove's aware of that. They were good with our intentions that we're looking to negotiate our land with the Tavia. Um, we are working with Batavia. They're obviously aware that we're looking to expand some of our Northwest territory there. Um, so in doing that, this line would actually help delineate between those two communities. So now, Batavia and North Aurora can negotiate for this area here. Um, Mike, are you going to negotiate with Aurora too? So. Correct. We're actually we're going to bring back Aurora first because the Aurora agreement actually expires this year. We have a couple of years with the Tavia, but we're trying to bring them all in unison. So that way, in 20 years' time, we can go back to all the municipalities at once and have a discussion um, as to where the current boundary line and what their statuses are. Uh, so we would bring the actual Aurora back. You'll see that come before the Tavia. Um, and they've already, we've sent Aurora a draft. Uh, update of ours, and they've already responded back to that draft, and it looks like both entities are pretty much agreeing that the language is looking like it's pretty much finalized. Well, that area that will now go up to Main Street, what tool is that? Is that much money? If it's so, uh, sections of our town that are in Remington Landing and in Hanner Trails. And I believe possibly a sliver of Mirador. So the very far northwest part of our town currently, most of those subdivisions, almost all of them are 129, but there is a small portion of some of those streets that are in Kingland District. But I'm talking about the area of the right now, the unincorporated area that Right, so what I'm saying is the districts of the school boundaries don't change with jurisdictional boundaries in the village. So Right. Assuming Kaylin comes down to the north, then they would say Kaylin. Does it make a difference in the desirability of the area? So that's just what I'm asking. Is the uh, are they in agreement with the boundaries? Well, what's, what's happening right now is so, sure, this is our agreement with Sugar Grove, and they're actually, Sugar Grove is actually going to take this to their building for tomorrow night. So we're, we're taking the exact same agreement tomorrow night with Sugar Grove. Uh, we will work with Batavia um, on this as we proceed. We're looking to get a word on the first and then Batavia. So uh, we haven't really gotten into the finer details with Batavia yet. That is to come. But Batavia is actually aware of this with Sugar Grove. And they, they do understand that there will be a line drawn with Sugar Grove. So they understand that the boundaries of our negotiating area. 
Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to look up right now the internet's a little slow, but I'm trying to look at the the previous school boundaries to see if they come down very well. But I believe that that whole more section of King was the last year, but I can even double check. A lot of that area of prices here in North North Aurora is foreign preserved land, but we will be dealing with the TV and that. But what this does, so it allows us, it actually, like I said, it helps expand the territory where we've been. Because before, basically this section line here would have been in line with our own landings, would have been our northern uh, northern boundary line. But now we're opening up to the possibility of going, now we're not obviously going to Main Street, uh, but we'll be working towards the north with uh, Jacob. There's a lot of forest preserved land up there on. Correct. And the demising line here is shown is, is the uh, Lake Run uh, drainage ditch. And also, too, we have Lake Run Forest Preserve. I think Big Young Forest Preserve right. up here. So there's a lot of undeveloped land uh, in the area. And this was actually brought to the community of the whole on April 1st. The agreement, none of the terms of, none of, the, terms of the agreement changed, just maybe some minor edits. Uh, but we did bring this to Cal on uh, April 1st. Will you approve? Sorry. Discussion? Court call the roll. Yes. 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 And to the Ms. Crosco. Sorry, item number two on the agenda tonight. Is a uh, resolution approving a contract with MetroMet. Uh, if the board remembers, we went to Operations Committee a while back in order to discuss uh, getting a new phone system here at Village Hall and, uh, and then also a new cable connection to uh, some of our buildings. Some of our buildings are inadequately connected right now. And we went out to look for one solution that is a company that can provide data connections, phone, and internet, and so we honed in on basically AT&T, uh, Metronet, and Comcast. Uh, AT&T did not submit initially when we were going through the process. Uh, we had a, we went to the operations committee with uh, members from Metronet and Comcast. The board had uh, agreed on, it, or they, the committee at the time said Metronet had a good price and they liked the package that they offered with the speeds brought it to the uh, committee of the whole, and in between uh, the, the, certain, or excuse me, the operations committee and the committee of the whole, Comcast had gone to the village and tried to give us better pricing. The board said, okay, go back to Metronet and see what they can do. So we bring a uh, contract before you tonight where uh, Metronet actually uh, came out lower. So in, in your memo in front of you tonight, you'll see Metronet's pricing is uh, the better of pricing. Uh, they also offer the, the basic infrastructure that the village thought was better to begin with, so that's, that's a positive. And the other thing that uh, I'd like to remember too is the village was going to be putting in their capital budget to, uh, or excuse me, the vehicle and equipment replacement budget to purchase phones as our phone system is updated. And that would have been another $50,000 to $100,000, and as part of this contract, or even the contract with Comcast, the phone system is included for free where they provide the hardware, the servers, the phones, everything. Uh, so if you look at the chart, the most important thing is the current price for what we pay for all these services now is only about $110 less a month than what we're getting this package. And let's put it this way, you're going from 1.5 meg speeds between building, between us and police, to 100 megs and fiber and an all new phone system. And so the, the static is static with the fact that we're moving forward with this. Um, the other thing that I know too is Metronet is a three year agreement where Comcast was a five year agreement. So in Metronet's case, not only are they slightly cheaper than Comcast, but they also give us a faster out, so to speak. If we if we didn't like it after three years, we'd be done with them and then we move on to another company. Uh, one other thing to note, I mentioned at a previous meeting that we had three confusing contracts, one was for phone, one was for data, and one is for a customer service agreement to manage our phone system. And I thought we were out of contract with all three, we are actually out of contract with all two, uh, two of the three. So we still have a, a phone contract that's about $260 a month. So Dave and I were talking before this meeting, 
and we went to the match and let them know that we're still on the contract, it actually worked out to our advantage because if we approve this contract tonight, for four months they'll build the system, and instead of you know, continually being paid for this old outdated phone system that we had that sometimes drops calls, um, MeshNet was part of this agreement will actually pay our penalty to get out of the current contract we're with, uh, with our other provider, which is about $2,000 here a day. So with that being said, the, the village is uh, requesting approval of a resolution to bring all of these functions under one umbrella and to approve a contract while price being entered into a contract with MeshNet. Thanks. Discussion. How soon can we get it? They said four months from the date the contract signed. Discussion? So call the roll. Curtis? Yes. 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 This is my new business. I have no old business. Uh, they report that uh, May 21st is the crossing guard appreciation day. So how do they uh, crossing guard? No, honor our North Aurora crossing guard to uh, ensure the safety of our children on the daily basis. Schools only have a couple more weeks. And uh, tomorrow is crossing guard appreciation day. Any committee reports? Trustee Condon? Mr. Spasco? No report of that, thank you. Mr. Attorney? And Billy's department's finance is about to come. Do you have anything on finance that was possible? No, I don't have anything for the board tonight. Community development? Mr. Toll. Yeah, uh, just to address uh, Trustee Curtis's um, question, it looks like the majority of that area, which would be located northwest of our current boundary line with the Tavia, and where we'd be going into with the Sugar Grove boundary and with the Tavia eventually, um, it does appear to be Canaan schools for the most part. Ready? Chief Fisher? No reports. Can I ask how to see our front reports? No report. Thank you very much. Uh, most for adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. 